The Steiner Military 4-16 by 50 is a very old scope in the grand scheme of things. Dating back at least 10 years ago, this German-made optic was designed simply for its, well, as its name intended, for the military. Despite its age, and despite the fact that it doesn't have all the top-tier features that many of us look for in modern-day rifle scopes, it does not mean that this potentially used optic for you to purchase is going to be bad. In fact, far from it. Sure, it's going to be a little bit longer, a little bit larger, and a little bit heavier than some of its more modern-day competitors, but that doesn't mean that it might not fit your bill to the T. Sadly, because these have been discontinued for quite some time and have been replaced by more modern variants from Steiner, that does mean that these might be a little bit hard to find. However, they do pop up on the used market for around the $800 to $1,000 price point, which, truth be told, for how good this thing feels in hand and how good it performs, I feel it's definitely still worth its price point. Now, with its age, some of you might be wondering, what happens if it breaks down? If something fails, can Steiner fix it, or would they have to replace it? Well, I honestly can't answer that question. Hopefully, they'd be able to repair it or replace it with an equivalent model, but if that's the case, then you'd be getting something much more modern and potentially better than how good this thing is. The snowstorm you are watching me film this scope in was filmed two years ago, and the reason for that is very simple. Well, I had a lot of other things that came across my lap that I needed to get out quickly, and because my Steiner videos don't really do all that well. So because of those two facts alone is why I sort of delayed it. However, there has been a recent resurgence in the 4 to 16 powered magnified optic. And this 4 to 16 by 50 I feel is potentially a benchmark scope for the used market if you are in the market for one of these things. And because of that reason, I figured let me get some more 4 to 16 footage out for you guys to be able to compare against more modern day variants. So, without further ado, let's get right into the review because I stupidly forgot to film the unboxing or the, rather the physical overview segment for this scope when I had it. When and had, as in past tense, I did recently sell this and it was with a very heavy heart. The only reason why I did was because I needed to fund other scopes that I wanted to buy for all of you to witness as I review them. So unfortunately, this thing had to go, which is something that I do kind of regret because I really, really did love it, despite its minor shortcomings, which we will be talking about right now. One such potential shortcoming might be the G2B illuminated mill reticle that you see here. For many of you, this might be a little bit too basic, a little bit too simple. But for many of you, it might be exactly what the doctor ordered. The reticle is very clearly visible and usable from 4 to 16x, which is something that I have been finding a lot of manufacturers have been dropping the ball with, especially in the 3 to 18 magnification range. So being able to use a 4 to 16 at both its minimum and its maximum effectively with a simple reticle like this is already very impressive to me. At the maximum magnification here at 16x, you can see it is very clear and easy to read, and sometimes simplicity really is key. The illumination on this scope is powered by a CR2450 battery and is not what I would consider daytime bright, but more or less just daytime visible. Given the fact that the reticle on this thing is very easy to spot at 4 or 16x means that you're not really going to need the illumination unless you're in a much darker environment. Happily, if it is in a much darker environment, it is more than bright enough for most cases. And if it's too bright, it's very easy just to turn the illumination dial down and find the exact illumination that you're looking for. It might not translate too well on video, but the sound and feel coming from these turrets are excellent. It might have a little bit more roll popping out of the detent going into the next, but lockup is solid and very reassuring. There are no locks on the windage or the elevation, but the elevation does have a really nice sound zero stop, as well as that lovely little button at the bottom for your rotational indicator, so you never have to worry about wondering where you are. 
Switching now to the tracking test, showing you the illumination here on full. It is wonderfully bright and very usable and easy to pick up. It's clear, it's crisp, it's nice and sharp. It is wonderful. Doing a mini box test, four mils over, four mils up, and you will see tracking on this thing is perfect so far, but that's only half the story. The rest really comes when you go a lot farther down, as in 10 full mils. So let's keep on adding elevation and see where we end up. Nine and 10. As near as makes no difference, 10 perfect mils of added elevation. Just because something is older, used, maybe even a little beat up, doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to function flawlessly. If you buy good, typically you got good. Now, as far as Steiner's heritage warranty, I had had the opportunity to test that with the T5 XI 5-25 that I reviewed quite some time ago, actually just around the same time that I had this. And I wasn't the biggest fan of their heritage warranty, but you know what, it was okay. I think the T5 series is just majorly flawed and it was just as good as it could be. But here with this military 4 to 16 by 50, it is wonderful at tracking. So what can we take away from this thing so far? Well, the reticle, simple, but very effective, clean, and usable. The illumination, very simple, effective, and usable. And the tracking, basically perfect. That just leaves now the overall question of the glass. How well does this thing perform when you actually go to use it to look at something? Well, I'm delighted to say that at least here at 4x at 30 yards, it looks rather fantastic. This was filmed two summers ago, so please bear with me. And my shooting style has changed ever so slightly. However, there is one negative that I must be honest with. It has a minimum side parallax of 50 meters, that's right. If you're a rimfire shooter, and let's say you shoot a lot at 50 yards, you're not gonna be able to use this thing at its maximum magnification and get a very clear image. You're gonna have to back it out to around 12 to 13 X before the parallax won't really make that much of a difference. Illumination here on full is just barely noticeable, but it still performs better than a lot of other optics in this sort of magnification range and usage setup. So. If you are gonna be shooting this inside 50 yards, just be mindful that it might not be the most optimized optic for you, at least at its maximum magnification. Back it down a little bit and it should be pretty good. But let's now stretch it out to about 400 yards on our brick building and see what we've got. Here you can see that the G2B reticle at minimum of 4X is still wildly usable and easy to pick up. It's very clear and easy to spot the center and even see some of those drops. Very important for someone like me that it usually lives in the lower magnification ranges of most scopes unless I'm really stretching out. Another thing to note, it's not an issue, but there is more of the scope body being seen with this scope as opposed to like Razer HDs. So just keep that in mind. I find that this is like right on the cusp of just being a little bit too big, but it's not annoying like some other scopes I've gotten behind. Slowly increasing the magnification to its maximum of 16x here at 400 yards. I think the image is great, but I do tweak that side parallax ever so slightly to see if I could squeeze any more out of it. I do wish that I had dropped my camera settings down a little bit so it's not as washed out as it currently is. I've really started taking more notice of that because some of my older videos are kind of hard for me to watch and I'm sorry for producing stuff that isn't to the level that I want all my stuff of being. This is really at a point where I should have been paying more attention and I apologize. Despite the fact that it is washed out, the only thing you're really going to notice is that the colors do seem a little bit more muted. However, the resolution, clarity, and sharpness of everything else is really, really high. Very little to no chromatic aberration to my eye at any magnification, at any brightness setting, anytime, anywhere. And it just looks wonderful, at least as sharpness and clarity goes. Again, colors are going to be a little bit more muted. That is my bad. During my time with this scope, I found that the colors were actually very true to life. Sometimes some manufacturers will make the colors seem a little bit more vivid, some a little bit more cool, some a little bit warmer, just to change the color palette a little bit. But I found that this Steiner Military really left the colors as true to form as possible, which is something that I do appreciate. I don't like looking through a scope and going blind with how the colors pop, but I also don't like it when the colors are muted. That'll typically be down to the glass quality, clarity, and the coatings on the glass. But the Steiner Military Series being made in Germany, they were not messing around when they made these folks. One such area that I have changed recently with my recordings is the 900-yard power tower, where I will showcase you what the iBox looks like. 
because I didn't do that here, I have to now tell you what the exit pupil is going to be, which is 12.5 to 3.1 millimeter minimum to maximum magnification. To put that into retrospect with a more modern day optic, which is incredible, the Night Force Attacker 416 by 42 has a minimum exit pupil, or rather, I'm sorry, a maximum exit pupil of 10.3 to 2.7, so it's much larger than that. One such test that I love running on these scopes that have a minimum magnification of at least 10x to qualify to come here at 1,000 yards and see how well the image can hold up when you start adding elevation is here. 1,000 yards, bright, sunny, clear day. Wonderful, very sharp and clear looking image. One thing I should have mentioned earlier is that the side parallax knob does line up really close to the actual distances that we are looking at. Anyway. Zero mils of added elevation is fine and dandy when you were just looking through it, just trying to spot something. But if you're actually trying to take a shot at that distance, you are going to need to do this thing called add elevation if you're not going to hold. So 10 mils of elevation added. Let's bring up the magnification back to maximum and see if we have any sort of image quality loss. All right, slowly bringing it up, bringing it up a little bit more. There we go. No. We really don't. A little bit of the darkening at the top part of the image, but that's just the exit pupil shifting ever so slightly, but so ever so slightly that I'm not even going to bother trying to correct it. The image on this thing is wonderful. Whether you're at zero mils or plus 10 at a thousand yards, it is fantastically stable and wonderful. Beautiful in every single way, shape, and form. Let's take a more dynamic look at the eye box on this thing. The 4X you will get a exit pupil of 12.5 millimeter, which is pretty good. It's about average for what we would see in the 4X magnification range, give or take. And as you can see, you could really get far behind this thing or off to the side and still look through it quite easily. Increasing the magnification here to 10X, and you still have a fairly forgiving looking image. For a lot of practical shooters, the middle part of any sort of magnification range is where a lot of people are going to usually keep their magnification. Typically, you only really use your max magnification, or at least you should, if you're spotting for someone else or taking a really precise shot from a very stable position. 16x, your exit pupil is 3.1 millimeters, which is still pretty average, and as a result, we do have a fairly easy time getting behind this thing in an off position. Low light performance is an area where I think everyone wants to have a scope that's going to perform good. Even if you're not hunting at night or shooting in darker environments, it's nice to know that you're getting at least good light transmission. There's a lot of stuff going for this scope that would hopefully allow it to have good light transmission. It's got a 50 millimeter front objective, 34 millimeter tube, a 4X multiplier, and good German glass with good coatings on it. And as you can see here at maximum magnification, it still lets in a lot of light. There is still a lot of light over the horizon. The sun had just set over the hill, so it's not like it's pitch black out, but it's right in that time when deer would start getting active. That little glow that you have at the bottom hemisphere looking through this is just the extra light coming in and reflecting off the front lens. Illumination in this sort of environment really starts to shine, and I feel it gets more than bright enough given the current ambient light that we have here right now. It's really nice. Again, no surprise there. Just look at how nice that illumination fills in that reticle. There's no washout, there's no splash out, there's no rough or jagged edges to it. Everything just looks fantastic. Man, I do miss this scope. Enough of that sad, dreary talk. Let's get into some hot side-by-side -side action. And what better way than to start off with another discontinued Steiner. That's right. The P4XI 4-16x56 is an American-made version of a 4 16 by Steiner. These are both 4 to 16s The military is a by 50 The P4XI was a by 56 so a larger front objective. Both of them have basically the same view looking through it. There is a couple of key differences. The military is 16.1 inches long. That's right. It is the longest MPVO I have ever reviewed. It was so long it didn't even fit on my reviewing shelf. The P4XI is at 14.6. Weight-wise, the military was 5 ounces heavier. Feature set-wise, they're both identical. Uh, neither of them had locking turrets, even though the P4's turrets were so tight it felt like locking turrets. The biggest difference is really going to be the eye relief. The military is set for about 3 to 3.5 three inches, whereas the P4 is 3.5 to about 4 inches. So despite the fact that both these have the same size view looking through it, the P4XI is at least a half inch farther forward from our camera right now, and that makes a world of difference when you get behind it. 
Both of these I really liked. As far as reticles, I kind of prefer the G2B reticle found in the military as opposed to the SCR reticle found in the P4XI. Simply because at the lower magnifications, you can pick up the G2B much easier. The SCR definitely gets a little bit too fine, a little bit too small, like below 5 or 6X, and it's it's it makes just enough to have it be a problem as far as optical quality between these two they're honestly really really close why would i pick one versus the other probably reticle probably just the cool factor the military 4 to 16 is really 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 cool the, the p4 is cool too p4 was made exclusively for uh, i can't remember who right now it wasn't it wasn't cameraland new york it was it was a company that had like commissioned it basically and they're still wildly popular. They're still very good, but you can clearly see here at a thousand yards, the military definitely pulls ahead. They're both really good in and of themselves. You could expect to pay around 800 bucks to a thousand dollars, depending on the condition and where you find it from, or who really needs money in a hurry. Would I recommend these? Absolutely. As long as you're fine with not having locking turrets and not having any like the really nice features. But truth be told, they're both wonderful scopes. Our next comparison is going to be with the Miopta Optica 6 3 to 18 by 50. So the difference here is the minimum magnification. You're talking about 4x versus 3x. And here at 30 yards, it might not seem like that much of a difference, but trust me, when we start stretching it out a little bit further, you will see that you get a much greater sense of what's going on downrange with that 1x difference. As far as some price comparisons, Despite the fact that Miopta is new, it's still going to be a little bit cheaper. They're found like around 800 bucks. The reticles here, I, as much as I like the G2B as a generalized reticle, I really do think the MRED 1 is one of the best reticles in the MPVO segment because here at 3X, you can find the center very quickly and accurately and use it effectively. A lot of reticles and a lot of MPVOs in, again, these magnification ranges are just brought down from like 5 to 25s and 5 to 30s and they're not scaled properly and it really 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 frustrates me that extra field of view makes a huge difference and speaking of for the military it's 28.5 feet at 100 meters so add about 10 percent to that and for the miopta optica 6 you were talking about 33.5 feet so it doesn't sound like that much but it really does start to add up as you can see on the top end for the Steiner, you have 7.8 feet. And again, for the Miopta, 5.8 feet. But that's again the difference of the extra 2X on top. This is where first focal plane anything sort of makes sense because if you don't want to be at 18X, you just dial it back down a little bit. But the 3X to the 4X is a much more usable jump than I think the 16 to 18. Look at these two images. Are you really losing that much or rather gaining that much going up those extra 2x? Not really, especially if you aren't shooting out to really extreme distances. 400 yards, 900 yards here, and can you really tell that much of a difference? No, neither can I. Weight-wise, the Steiner is going to be about 5 ounces heavier at 35 ounces. And exit pupil-wise, I will have to say that the Steiner is going to be larger partly in due to the fact that it's probably a 4X multiplier, as opposed to the 6X with the Miopsica 6. Which one would I recommend? Down to personal preference, but I'd probably go with the Optica, simply because it's available. Next up is going to be another 3 to 18, but this time it's going to be the Trigicon 10 mile. This is a 30 millimeter tube, just like the Miopta. I forgot to mention that earlier. And these can be found for about 1400 bucks. Uh, it says Credo on top. That was a my bad. It's a 10 mile. The Credo that I just recently reviewed is in second focal plane in 2.5 to 15x, which is kind of an interesting magnification range, especially when it's second focal plane, but that will be left for another review. As far as what I think about the Trigicon, uh, it's kind of similar in specifications to the military as far as non-locking turrets and whatnot. Uh, another thing with the Miopta, it's got way better functionality in that regard, locking elevation and capped windage. Here with the Trigicon, you're getting a lot larger field of view downrange, again, because it's a 3x at the minimum, not 4x. Exit pupil, though, it's not bigger. It's actually smaller. Again, the magnification range, 4 to 16 versus 3 to 18, it's that magnifier that really starts to make a big difference. Plus, I think the length of the military has a lot to do with it. Very similar 
to the length in the Primary Arms SLX 4 to 16 that I had recently reviewed, which you will not be seeing here because I did all of this stuff before I even got the SLX. I, it's been waiting in the queue that long. And um, honestly, I just completely forgot to do a comparison before getting this final edit together. So I apologize. But the SLX 4 to 16 is incredible as far as everything goes. And it's also a very large scope. I can give you some specifications on that. It is 14 and a quarter inches long, but with a 26.6 field of view and 6.5 foot field of view. So not too far off from the Steiner and it's just a wonderful scope to get behind. If you're in a budget, if you're in a super budget, go with that. As far as the 10 mile, I implemented this for this comparison because it's in that next price tier higher up than the military and everything else that we've looked at at 14, 1500 bucks. It's easily 50% more expensive. Are you getting 50% more scope? I don't think so. It is going to be a little bit lighter. It's going to be, well, a, a, more than a little bit. It's going to be 10 ounces lighter, 24.4 ounces as opposed to 35. But it's trying to fill that, that gap between like hunter and tactical and not be too heavy or too bulky. Between these two, the Trigicon 10 mile was like, okay, I'd absolutely go with the military, even though it would be older. It's just a better overall functioning product in my opinion and in my findings. The 10 mile and the Credo, they're, they were a little bit flat, but the military here would absolutely take the cake. Okay, see, enough. I want to see this compared against other 4 to 16s in a much lower budget price point. Well, because again, I didn't have the SLX in hand. Uh, here's the Arkin SH4 4 to 16 Gen 2. These can be had for around 300 bucks. Very cheap, very similar in spec to the military. 4 to 16 by 50, 34 millimeter tube. Almost 13 inches long, so still about 3 inches shorter than the Steiner Military. Weight-wise, they are identical. Field of view-wise, they're basically also identical. Though the view looking through the Arkin is larger than it is with the Military. It's just big. The Arkins actually look really good. As far as the ultimate eye relief with the Steiner Military, it's set between 3 and 3.5 and inches. Whereas with the SH4, it's locked in at 3.6 inches, so that might have something to do with it. The image is also washed out on the SH4, so again, I apologize for sucking at my job. I sincerely apologize. As far as everything else with the Arkin, they're honestly pretty decent scopes. And for the price, if you're looking for almost everything that the military can do for a third the price basically, it's not a bad option. I haven't really had any problems with any of the Arkin stuff that I've really looked at. I haven't looked at any of the more modern stuff. I know that they have the EP, the uh, EP4, EL4. They're, they're lighter weight version. I'm, I'm probably gonna end up buying one of those. I haven't spoken to Arkin since I got the 4 to 16 to review. I told them I wanted to torture test it and they were like, please don't. And then that was it. So that's why I haven't had other Arkins on the channel. They haven't sent one in, and I'm not going to just do it for the sake of doing it. Nor am I going to write a good review if, um, you know, they ask me to. I'm going to be honest with it. However, the SH4 Gen 2 4 16 by 50 is pretty damn impressive. Just like the military is pretty damn impressive. But it's really cheap. It's just, it's a good, it's a fine scope. Here at 300 yards, both of these scopes look fantastic. Fantastic. So if you are on a very tight budget or you want to buy something that's just going to be newer, not used, go with the Arkin. Sure, why not? But if you could find a military and you want to have that extra special sauce, definitely go with the military. But again, it's all about budget. And if you can only afford an SH4, go for it. But get the 4 to 16. Don't get the 6 to 24. The 4 to 16 is definitely the one to get. My final comparison is going to be with perhaps still in my mind's eye, one of the best scopes I've ever gotten behind, the Night Force Attacker 4 to 16 by 42. This thing is for lack of a better term, flawless. It's expensive, about 2,500, give or take a couple hundred, depending on where you find it and with what reticle you are getting. But there's nothing negative to say. It does everything it's supposed to do perfectly. The colors are so perfect. The sharpness, the clarity, the depth of field, everything about it is so perfect. But it might have some features like that you might not like. Like the view looking through it is a little bit on the smaller side. 
but they do that to keep the resolution of the glass extremely high, which is why you can get such a sharp image like what you see here. As far as the eye relief, they're about the same. The Steiner Military is 3 to 3.5, three the attacker is locked in at 3.5. As far as the weight, the attacker is going to be 5 ounces lighter at 30 ounces. It's also going to be much shorter, almost 3.5 inches shorter than the military. But again, it's the price point. The attacker is 2500 That's basically three times the price of the military, which is a lot. But I guarantee you, when the military first came out, it was probably in that two to $2,500 price point. So right in line with what this attacker is. Looking at these two side by side, we can definitely make some comparisons between the two. But the attacker is almost untouchable. But that doesn't mean that the military would completely fall apart in a side by side comparison. Again, it's still slightly washed out, but it's still a very usable, sharp, clear image. The thing tracks perfectly. The reticle is a great option, very similar to the Mil R reticle with the attacker, but I believe the actual G2B might be a little bit better. I'm not the biggest fan of the dots at the full mill. I'd rather have what the Mil R reticle has, which is larger and, or rather, longer and shorter hash marks, but they're both very painfully capable optics. And this is something that I want to start talking about more and more is usable practical magnification ranges and what is, in my opinion, like the best overall for a given purpose. If you're looking for an SBR scope, the military might not be perfect for you because of its size and its weight. 16 inches, 35 ounces, but something like the attacker is definitely going to be more in line with that. Frankly, to be brutally honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, or lady and gentlemen, there's got to be at least one out there. And if it's my mama, I love you, mama. Thank you for watching and supporting me. I love you dearly. But gentlemen, I love reviewing older scopes. I think I actually prefer it to newer stuff because I, I, I love just getting a sense of what manufacturers are doing some time ago. And it actually makes more sense to me than a lot of the newer stuff that's coming out. Because with all the newer stuff, it's always about just selling numbers. You know, it's like car manufacturers. Oh, my car makes 300 horsepower. Oh, my car makes 302 horsepower. Oh, mine makes 305. It's the best. Stop chasing numbers, people, and start chasing just performance. Just because you have more power doesn't mean that the car is going to handle better or feel better or be soothing to drive or engaging it just doesn't work like that it's got to be the complete package you could have a car that's fast but handle like crap that's not comfortable but yet it goes around a corner really quickly yeah anyone can build a honda civic into a race car and it would be really fast on a track but who really wants to drive that across the country nobody everything can be found in balance and i feel that manufacturers around the same time that they built this military were more in line with that sort of concept and practice. Yeah, they might not have had all of the same great features that, that are available now, like locking turrets, for example. But that is just a, a product of the time, given that this scope was made quite some time ago and has been since replaced by at least three other versions of the M or military scope series from Steiner. Doesn't mean that it's bad, no. In fact, I think the exact opposite. I think this is a great scope. It manages to strike a balance with everything that just seems to work. It might be a little bit larger. It might be a little bit heavier. But all the controls are fantastic. The thing tracks flawlessly. I really wish I had the opportunity of getting my hands on the scope again to put through another series of filming segments just so I could try to capture its overall capacity to its maximum. I would say if I had to give it a percentage number, it's within 90 to like 94%. And the devil really is in the details. That extra 5 or 6% could really take this thing over the edge to have you understand just how wonderful it is. I could only show you a little bit of the physicality of this thing, and I really am regretful of that. The eyepiece and the magnification ring have the same rubberized texture as what you could find in my military 1 to 5 video that I did a while ago. In fact, those are around the same sort of era. The side parallax adjustment is so smooth and just precise. It's, it's hard to put into words. 
I still don't like the illumination control, but I don't like the illumination control on most Steiners, even the new T6XIs, which, sneak peek, I will be reviewing one of those very soon. But the turrets on this thing are just so dutiful and purposeful. Everything feels robust. It feels like it would withstand the test of time. It's really a no-frills sort of optic. Just look at the reticle. This isn't designed to be used to hold over at 60 plus mils like like the Tremor 3. It's just, here's a couple of mils on your windage, on your elevation. Here are really good turrets, really good glass, good illumination, as you can clearly see here, daytime visible. And it just works. And I have no doubt in my mind that it would work for a very long time, even if you abused it a little bit. I mean, I don't mean drive nails with the thing, but use it. Use it in matches. Use it on a hunt. Use it in tactical games. It would probably withstand the test of time. I would feel confident running this on my gun. And the only reason why I sold it, again, like I had said, was I wanted to fund a lot of other things. And as much as I love this thing, there are a couple of other scopes that I wanted to hold on more, especially for the price that I got for it, because it could go to bigger and better things for the channel. And it has, indeed, it has, because it's been quite some time since I sold it. Anywho, I'm not going to have this review be any longer than it needs to be. Hopefully, you could appreciate older stuff the way I do, and maybe you'd even be lucky enough to get your hands on one of these, or the 3 to 12 variant that was also available. That would be really cool to check out. Maybe I'll try to get my hands on one of those in the future. Only time can truly tell. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.